So are harder knives less safe than softer knives? Today, we're gonna to try and answer that question. So in order to test this question, I got a slow motion camera that shoots a thousand frames per second. I heat treated a bunch of pieces of steel at varying hardness levels. I built a crappy test rig that was interesting to use. And I broke a bunch of steel. This is insane, look. A giant piece flew off, went through the paper. So in light of some recent hardness testing that I've been doing here on the YouTube channel, there seems to be a single question that comes up more than any other. And that is why don't knife manufacturers or knife makers leave their knives as hard as humanly possible since the harder the knife, generally speaking, the better the edge retention and the better the knife is gonna perform during cutting tasks. And there seems to be two answers to this question. The first one is that knife manufacturers, knife makers are worried about warranty claims with people using their knives in ways that they shouldn't be used. The second one is that harder knives are much easier to break, in which case they would become much less safe for the user and bystanders. Now that kind of got me thinking, which usually isn't a good thing, about you know how safe or unsafe is a knife when it breaks. Are knife manufacturers and knife makers more concerned about warranty claims or safety, or is it really an issue at all? So let's break some stuff. Now let's talk about what I did in order to get set up for testing. So the steel that I'm going to be using is 1084. It's just what I have on hand. I'll then measure out and cut a bunch of pieces on the bandsaw. And while the oven is preheating, I will look up the heat treating recipe, which I'm getting from the Knife Steel Nerds Bible of Knife Making. I highly recommend this book. Pick it up, link below. I'll then heat treat all of the pieces in my oven, quenching in Parks 50. I then labeled all of the pieces in the order that they were quenched and flattened both sides of each piece on the grinder being extremely careful, very, very careful to not heat the pieces up in any way. I then ran 1 million hardness tests and took an average for the average result for each piece. I also monitored oil temperatures during the quenching, which gave me some interesting results. After testing all of these, um, number two seemed to be exactly the same. I mean, exactly. I got a lot more, well, I say a lot, like, you know, you can see here, just a tiny bit of variation in the first batch, and then the third batch was also consistent. Um, I did not preheat the oil, so potentially that could be giving us some inconsistencies, but that's a, a topic for another video. I then tempered some pieces. The first one was left completely untempered. The second one was tempered at 300, and then the rest of them were tempered in 25 degree increments, ending at 450 degrees. I then ran another 1 million hardness tests, took an average, and labeled each piece corresponding to its temper temperature. And it's now time to break some steel. <laughs> First piece goes in is the completely untempered piece straight out of the oven. <laughs> wow. So I'm always amazed at how hard it is to break completely untempered steel. This is a pipe wrench and it took all of my 150 so pounds in order to break it. Now, if you're watching closely, you will probably notice that there were some significantly sized pieces flying off of there fairly quickly. So now let's look at this frame by frame and you will notice right there, you can see a piece flying off into the background. So I did some basic calculations here and judging by the amount of frames that it took that piece to move the distance that I approximated it moved, it was moving in the neighborhood of about 83 miles per hour. So I'm sitting here editing this 
And after reviewing the footage on the computer up close and not on a camera monitor, um, I think we can say for certain that breaking knives and breaking hardened steel in any capacity is not a good idea. Um, we're going to get a little bit more data here in a second as we move along in the video. And we'll get a little bit more accurate speed readings on how fast these pieces are moving. But we can say at this point that having your knife, you don't want to be anywhere near a knife when it snaps. I then ran the same test a couple more times on the same untempered piece. The second time, nothing much happened. It just sort of shattered in a couple of pieces. And then we got something else. The third time I ran the test on the untempered piece, we had a piece flying out back towards where the user would typically be standing. This sort of looks like it's heading um, off to the side slightly. And again, using some extremely basic calculations, I calculated this to be about 74 miles per hour. Now the next piece was tempered at 300 degrees, which gave me a Rockwell hardness of 63. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. After a quick reset, we finally got what we wanted, which was pieces flying everywhere. So let's look at this frame by frame. Uh, again, basic calculations. We've got some of those small pieces coming off of there at around 134 miles per hour. So you have to ask yourself, will safety glasses protect you from a BB-sized, razor-sharp piece of steel hitting your eyeball. Serious question. Maybe they will. What if you get hit in the neck? Okay, so this one is tempered at 350, and this is 61.8 Rockwell. Hopefully we can break this. So this was really interesting. It's almost like the thing exploded. I mean, the amount of energy that is put into a tiny piece of steel and then released in such a short period of time. I mean, these tiny little pieces are flying off of here super fast. How fast are these extremely tiny pieces moving? Try approximately 334 miles per hour. Yeah. Okay, so this is tempered at 375, 61 HRC. So this is where you start to see some real world applications. You will see some knife makers run 1084, 1095 at 60 to 61 HRC. So this is, in my opinion, the first realistic test. And nothing much happened here, so let's try it again. So here we can get some more accurate numbers on how fast these small pieces are moving. And it looks like they moved approximately one foot in two frames. So that equals 334 miles per hour. Little pieces are one thing, but what about big pieces? Well, that brings us to our next piece. Here we go. This is tempered at 400. 60.2 HRC. <gasps> what? Okay, are you ready for this? That was a razor sharp piece of steel heading in an unknown direction at about 45 miles per hour. So this piece was razor sharp and uh, it would be approximately the equivalent of someone throwing it at you. A giant piece flew off, went through the paper, <laughs> went clean through my photo booth, almost went through the back, back of this backdrop here, and I found it right there. So this is where most knife makers run this steel. Tempered at 400 degrees gives approximately 60 HRC. I don't believe there's any reason for concern as you can see just how far this piece bent before it broke. On to 
tempered at 425. This is at 59 HRC. This is where you're going to find most high carbon steel blades that you purchase from the store, from ma most major manufacturers. You're going to be 58 to 59 HRC. And I'm kind of afraid. So 57 to 59 HRC is where you're going to find most major manufacturers are going to run their 1095. 1084 and 1095 are similar enough that you're going to get uh, similar results at similar hardness levels. One thing that I'll mention is that I had to change my breaker bar setup to allow significantly more leverage on these pieces because my old breaker bar just wasn't cutting it. I was literally standing on the wrench and they weren't breaking. So here's a shot of that. And the reason I ran over the camera there is to stop the recording. I only have two seconds to hit the button after it breaks in order to capture what happened. And our speed here is sort of irrelevant due to the way that it came out of the wrench rather than just uh, broke off the piece. But we were only looking at about six miles an hour. So not a whole lot. So let's move on to our next piece. This is tempered at 450, 58.5 HRC. So some of these tests I had to do multiple times with the smaller pieces simply due to the fact that I didn't get a reaction off of some of them. Some of them I missed the camera footage or whatever. So this is a smaller piece so you're not going to see it bend as much as some of the other ones but we did get a pretty good reaction. And again, due to the way that it came out of the wrench there, uh, I don't think speed really matters but we did only get about 8.8 .8 miles per hour. Here's our last piece that we have uh, prepared, and that is a 475 degree temper. And this one tested at 57.5. It's not uncommon to find a lot of knife manufacturers heat treating their 1095 to 57 to 59. So this is still in the range of what manufacturers are doing. So this really could not have been a better piece. This thing broke perfectly and sent a rather significantly large piece flying right into the backdrop there, which is just a piece of old t-shirt. And the speed on this was approximately 56 miles per hour. So razor sharp piece of steel, 56 miles per hour. Oh, look at that, right there. So that is what that piece did. So I mean, it actually takes a decent amount of speed in order to go through a free hanging shirt like this. So, I mean, and that is, that's pretty sharp actually. So that would, that would not be a good day. So did we learn anything today? Did we answer the question? Are harder knives less safe than softer knives? Yes, I think that I think that that's true. From a knife maker's perspective and from a knife manufacturer's perspective, yes, I do believe that that is the case. They are worried about both things, warranty claims as well as the knives being less safe. Now, even though the softer knives failed much more spectacularly, the harder knives failed much more easily. Now I think it's a whole lot more likely that your average knife user who's using his knife to do something they probably shouldn't be doing with it. Yo Bobby, got my bar stuck, what do I do? Got a knife? Is going to have a failure with a knife at 63 Rockwell versus a knife at 57 or 58 Rockwell. Ah, ants. A nine or 10 inch long fixed blade knife you could probably break that with your bare hands doing something you probably shouldn't be doing with it. Now that same eight or 10 inch fixed blade knife would be probably impossible to break by hand if it was tempered down to 57 or 58 Rockwell. I had to use a six foot 
cheater bar attached to the wrench in order to break the 58 Rockwell piece. So when you're looking at doing things you're not supposed to be doing with a knife, most people are going to get to a point where they say, I probably shouldn't be doing this with my knife before the knife breaks at 57 or 58 Rockwell versus 62 or 63 Rockwell. Now one thing that I also want to address real quick is we're not talking about apex stability here because I know this is gonna come up in the comments. Apex stability is how stable is that very apex or that very sharpened edge. Do you in fact have a better chance of chipping off or breaking that apex, doing things you probably shouldn't be doing with a knife, with a harder knife versus a softer knife? That's not what we're addressing here. We're simply addressing whether or not the knife is capable of standing up to standard everyday wear and tear. Now have I personally broken a knife doing something that I wasn't supposed to be doing with it. Yes, I have an everyday wear and tear. So I think that this is a completely relevant topic here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, you know where to leave them. Hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified every time I upload a video. This was not a cheap video to make, so I appreciate that. As well as, please hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.